an IT guy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I would say that. I'm kind of a geek. Um, I just want to go, I was praying before we came in, and, and we're, I'm the product of, I'll say, bullheaded Christians. The guy that witnessed to me more than any other, I was working at a jail then, this was way back right after I got out of the military in 92. Um, I had to sit in a cubicle with a guy who was just this on-fire Christian. I mean on fire, and this idiot talked to me about Jesus every day, and I said, dude, I, don't, I was raised Catholic, I'm good, leave me alone. I mean, that was again and again and again, and he wouldn't let up. Larry kept on me and kept on me and kept on me, and then my neighbor got into it, uh, lived behind me, was a Marine, didn't know anything about Larry, but God was working on him at the same time. Um, he asked me to come visit his church. I said I would. I asked him the name of it. He said, it's Ridgecrest Baptist Church. I said, that sounds great. When? He said, Saturday or Sunday morning. So we got up. My wife and I got up. Now, I had been raised Catholic. Uh, I was a really good drunk. I was a good partier. I knew how to, I mean, I wasn't a Christian. I was lost. I did what lost guys do. And our, our country is full of them. I mean, and they're not bad. They just need Jesus. These guys worked on me. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of the church. Bobby, my wife at the time, said, uh, where are we going? I said, I, it's something Crest. It's on Republic Road. How many can there be? Well, there's two. <laughs> there's Ridge Crest, which is the second one, and there's Park Crest, which is the first one. Well, we walked in the door to Park Crest, the wrong church. Uh, that was in February of 93. Um, that preacher preached hellfire and brimstone, and I mean scared the hell out of me. He did. <laughs> I was a Catholic kid, and I was scared. I was like, oh, man, I am missing something. They gave an altar call. I hung on to the pew for dear life. Um, I was afraid. I had never heard. I had never heard the gospel presented. I never knew that I was going to go to hell. I didn't know that. I left. I, went, I grabbed my wife. We headed for the door after the invitation was over. I didn't go forward. I hung on to the pew. My knuckles were white, and I was scared to death. I grabbed my wife and we headed for the door. And we got to the door and there was an old guy there that was a greeter, another bullheaded Christian, made me promise to come back next week. He could see it. I know Hugh could see it all over me. He was like 75 years old back in 92. He's long since passed away. But he made me promise him. And the last thing he said to me was he said, are you a man of your word? Now, how many of us, I'm guilty of this, how many of us have said that to people that we know need it and we've asked them for a commitment and they say, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. He cornered me. I had to go back. We got up next week. I have no clue what was preached. I don't have a clue. I just sat there like a good Catholic boy waiting for the invitation. He gave the invitation. I went forward and I'm telling you, Jesus changed me. It was amazing. I could I was like, my wife... She said, you're different. I stood up. She said, you look different. I mean, everything about me was different. We went home. I had been in the Air Force. I'd been all over the world. We had a really nice bar. Um, we dumped out probably $1,000 worth of really good liquor. I mean, dumped it down the drain. It was like I didn't know what else to do, but I knew that wasn't part of my life anymore. And, and nobody said, well, you can't do this. Nobody said that. It was just I knew I wasn't supposed to, so we dumped it out. Fast forward just a, a few years, several years, <laughs> we got into business. I leased a building from a guy who was a member of Businessman's Fellowship. Um, I had learned, you know, I had grown up some over the years. I'd been going to that same church. Not a bad church, very solid, but man, they need the Holy Spirit. They need the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it is amazing. And this guy would come into the store that I leased from him. And because I leased from him, he felt he had the right to get involved in my business. Not my business, but my life business. And he's like, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, you're crazy. I did. He came in, and he was another bullheaded Christian. And I say that to say, guys, we're falling down. We don't get in people's faces like we can. We don't get in their lives like we can. I'm guilty of it. I know that. Jack Cole is the reason that I today can tell you that I have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it's because Jack Cole stayed on me every week. I mean, he came in the store and he was smiling and he was happy. He came in one week, it was a retail computer store. He came in one week and he said, he starts praying and talking to all the parts 
that are on the wall and in the shelves. And I mean, we had a lot of inventory. And he starts praying and talking that stuff. He's like, you need to go where you're supposed to go. And I thought, this guy is nuts. I'll just give him time and let him do his thing, and then he's going to go away. We had the best month we've ever had. We sold everything. I mean, it was crazy. I was like, okay, so there's something here. This guy's got something. And then I started researching. And he would give me scriptures written down. He'd say, here, read this. You know, read this. Well, I was reading and studying my Bible, and I had a pretty good foundation. I thought. And I went to a prayer meeting, March the 8th, 2007. And Jack and four other guys laid hands on me. And the Holy Spirit fell on me. We had a good company. What I thought by men's eyes was a good company. We were making a lot of money. We were selling software. We were selling, I mean, all kinds of stuff. We had written some software. We'd sold some stuff to Dell. We were, I mean, it was a good deal. I was making more money than I'd ever seen. And I thought I was doing it right. And I thought it was honoring God, but it became the George Show. And it became to where that company, all of our advertising, long story short, I was called the squirrel eater, but that was because of a local radio guy. But anyway, he called me a squirrel eater on, on the radio one morning because we did a talk show with him. And that just took off, and that became my persona. And it was no longer we built this company for God. We didn't, yeah, okay, I'm a Christian, and God wouldn't bring me this far to fail. That was my outlook, and it became about me. And that next morning, that Tuesday morning, after getting the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I went into that store, and God had taken the scales and ripped them off of my eyes, and he showed me every problem that was in that scale. He showed me where people were stealing. He showed me where we were doing things financially that we shouldn't have been doing, and stuff that I, I didn't know about in most cases. And in some of the cases, I did know about it, and I just turned my back because we were making good money, and it was okay because my tithe check was big to the church. It just it will amaze you if you will let God direct your steps to the next guy you're supposed to talk to. I, I hung on to God, and, and <laughs> that company is gone now. I fell in love with God. Last summer, I was traveling. I was st still part of a new software company and, and was traveling to California last summer. <laughs> July 28th, I was in New Mexico, went to sleep on an Indian reservation, um, my wife calls me from home or from just up the street from our house in Springfield, and she says, I'm dying. And I said, what? She said, it's over. I can feel it. Sorry. She died about 10 minutes later. I promise, God, I'll never ask why. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm here, and let's go. We had the funeral. It was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. We had about 600 people there, plus or minus. Gave testimonies. Man, it was beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful. It was a celebration of God and how God could work through a humble woman. I'm telling you, she was humble. To put up with me, she had to be. Four days after the funeral, a woman walks up to me and says... I signed up on a list. I'm in your Sunday school class. I signed up on a list to bring you some food Saturday night. What do you like? I said, I don't care. Whatever you want to cook. Now, mind you, my wife was 47 years old. She knew she was going to die young. I don't know how she knew that, but she did. She left me a letter, three pages. And in this letter, she outlined some things. She said, the first thing she said was what I had told her since I got saved. I said, God's got this. And I opened this letter up and I read it. After we turned off life support, the hardest thing, I said, I could never do that, God. Don't, I couldn't, I can't do that. I can't get by without my wife. You know what he showed me? Honestly, we can do anything. I can do all things through Christ. All things. The one thing that I said I can't do, God said, yes, you can. And I'm telling you, we walked through that. My kids are just, I mean, they're great. They're doing amazing. This lady walks up to me. Now, okay, I'm reading the letter after we turn off life support. And as you can imagine, it was traumatic. The first thing she says in this letter is, God's got this. If you're reading this, God's got this. The words that, that I used to encourage her 
through all of the garbage that we'd been through, financial ups and downs, and I said, God's got this, God's got this. Well, now she's telling me God's got this. She said, if you're reading this, God's already prepared somebody else to step in because I know you can't raise those kids. We need them to grow up to be good kids, and you're just not the guy. That's not what she said, but it was basically what she said. She lays out some very specific things in this letter. And as I read these qualifications, if you will, I'm thinking in my mind, there's no way. I am never going to get married. Well, she put down a couple of things about us and a couple of things about what this woman would say to me. Now, we had a funeral on Saturday. We had the internment Saturday afternoon. My oldest son and I came home on Monday. Wednesday, I put my wife's lifelong friend on an airplane, and she went back to Florida. She'd helped me. How many people know how to do laundry? I didn't know how to do laundry. She taught me how to do laundry, but anyway. I put her on the plane, and this was when the time when I felt most alone. Robert and I went to church that night, and Karen walked up to me, and she said, You don't know me. I was in your Sunday school class. I knew Bobby. She said, I came into Sunday school class and I wasn't married and I told Bobby that I didn't want to go to a singles class because I just want to learn and find God. And she said, Bobby looked at me and said, God's got something for you in this class. You stay here as long as you want. That was in like April or May. I didn't know any of this. I was traveling, had my head down. I'm working a new company. You know how we get, guys. We're going. She tells me this, and then she turns to walk away, and she stops. And she comes, turns her back around, and she says the two things to me that my wife had written in a letter, how I would know the person that God had prepared for me. And I stood there with my mouth open. I was like, okay, Lord. My 16-year-old was standing there with me. We walked her out to her car and put her in her car and she drove home and we get in the car and (laughs) I was dumbfounded. I've just buried my wife. It's even wrong to think this. And we followed God and anyway we had an interview. She calls the grilling. I interviewed her the next week because I knew that scripturally she'd have to be qualified. God wouldn't bring somebody to me that could not scripturally meet what it was going to take. And that's the way I looked at it. And that's how we approached it. And we started down that road. And it was amazing. 25 years ago, 27 years ago, before I got married, if I'd have written out a list of the things that, that I would want to do, that I would want in a woman, it would be Karen. And I'm just so blessed and so amazed that God has done that. And I'm telling you, it would not have happened because I'm, I wouldn't be the person that I would, that I am today if it hadn't been for somebody in BMF getting in my face and telling me I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I wouldn't have been able to follow God. I wouldn't have been able to do it. And that's my charge for me and for everybody else that's in here. We need to tell guys. We need to tell them. Because they need to know it, they need to hear it, and they need to feel it. Thank you. Yeah.